So over the last couple years, the concept of a collapse or large-scale SHTF event has become an urgent and pressing concern for many. The idea of a societal breakdown and the need for long-term survival planning is sort of shifted from the realm of the doomsday, the quote-unquote doomsday prepper, to a topic of mainstream conversation. Now, even though it's become more mainstream, an overwhelming majority of people still don't have enough food and water to last a week, uh, maybe even less than a week, if supply lines and critical infrastructure are shut down. In this video, what I want to do is explore the timeline of a collapse, the types of events that may occur, and what steps we can take now to prepare for a prolonged period of societal breakdown. So a couple of things first. We don't know how these events might unfold, so predicting it is pretty hard to do. If the power grid is down from the very beginning, that could escalate the timeline of the different events in this situation. And vice versa, if the power remains on, it could change how things unfold over the course of time. So in the context of this video, a collapse refers to a catastrophic event or a series of events that would result in the breakdown of essential systems and services. This could include, but it's not limited to natural disasters, pandemics, economic collapse, acts of war, EMPs, cyber attacks, or even declaring martial law, and quite possibly a combination of a few of these different events. The consequences of a collapse are far-reaching and can lead to widespread panic, shortages of essential resources, breakdown of law and order, and a complete disruption of daily life as we know it. So to better comprehend the timeline of a large-scale collapse, let's examine the stages that typically unfold in the aftermath of a major disaster. So let's talk about the first couple of days, the first 24 to 72 hours. In the immediate aftermath of some sort of large-scale disaster or complex disaster, there's often a period of shock and confusion where people are really unaware or unwilling to look at the full extent of the situation. What they do in this period is they rely on the authorities and the emergency services that are supposed to be there to restore order. We have seen time and time again where that is not necessarily the case, depending on the scale. During this time, our safety is the first thing we should have in mind. Avoid getting caught in the chaotic masses. Avoid having to go to grocery stores. Avoid as much as possible having to interact with these people that really don't know what's going on at this point. At the same time, we need to make sure that we do have our ducks in a row. And if we do need something or we do have the opportunity to grab a little bit extra, this, the first 24 hours, is your window to do that. After the first 24 hours and maybe even less than that, that window has closed. Think of this like the eye of the hurricane or the calm before the storm. Right now, you can capitalize on people's confusion and not knowing what's going on. With you having the foresight and understanding this could get a whole lot worse, you have an opportunity to seize on this moment and gather, get your ducks in a row, basically. Decisions you make at this time are going to have consequences down the line. This is your window of opportunity to decide whether you are going to bug in or bug out. This is your opportunity to maybe go get some extra fuel, fill up your car, uh, get some propane, get those things that need to be topped off. All these things that if you do have the opportunity can help your situation down the line. But again, you don't want to put yourself in danger uh, by getting these things. That's why we prepare beforehand for situations like these. Another thing you should do in the first few days and even the first day is start communicating with your neighbors. If you have a MAG group, communicate with them uh, or support groups or anybody that you're going to need to depend on down the line. Now, a MAG group is going to be a little easier because they have the like mindset. But with your neighbors, you're going to have to basically figure out who is friend and who is foe. 
who is going to be able to help you, and who is completely oblivious about the situation. Also in this stage, you want to make sure you have what you think you have and doing a quick inventory or uh, going through your supplies and making sure you know where everything is, sort of getting organized and ready for what may come. By doing this, you also give yourself an opportunity if there are things that you thought you had but you don't have, this is your window to go out and get those. So don't let this window pass without making these critical decisions. Along with your neighbors and your mag group, this will be your opportunity to get family members home all on the same page, all in the same place. And it's important that we teach our family members and they understand the fact that if something does happen, this is their window of opportunity. That first day is their best opportunity to get home, to get where they need to be. Because after that, which will go on to the, the first week, uh, everything gets a whole lot harder. All right, so let's move to the first week after a collapse. And as the days progress, this is where the initial shock starts to wear off. When they tell you not to panic, that's when you run. And the reality and the severity of the situation becomes more apparent for those that were thinking that, oh, this is just a temporary thing. It's Everything's going to be fine. The government is here to help. Basic services and supplies could begin to dwindle. This leads to panic buying and looting. By this point at the first week, you may be looking at a situation where there's really nothing left to loot. But again, that depends on how quickly this scenario escalates. Law enforcement, emergency services, the first responders, hospitals will all become overwhelmed. And the declaration of martial law becomes a real possibility at this point if things are getting so far out of control that the government services can't handle the situation. Uh, in this type of situation, it's really crucial to remain vigilant and adapt to the changing circumstances. This very well could be the most dangerous time because of the uncertainties and because of the unknowns and the people, maybe not necessarily you and your family, but everyone else out there that will just have no idea how to handle a situation like this. And depending on what caused this collapse what or what events together caused this disaster, ATMs, credit card machines might be useless. The grid might be down, which means that the money in your bank is inaccessible. So the cash that you will have on hand is basically what you have. And at this point, uh, you know, after a few days, you don't even want to risk going out in the first place. So you should have everything you need by this point. And if you don't, you're stuck with what you have. At this point, the roads will be jammed. And this could be even less than a week. But the roads will be completely jammed and getting anywhere is going to be nearly impossible. Getting food from the grocery stores is going to be impossible. Getting fuel for vehicles is going to be impossible. And just going out in the first place is going to be very dangerous. What we need to do at this point, and hopefully we are where we are going to be for the duration of these next few months, is to secure your property and your home. People, once the grocery store shelves are empty, once there is no fuel at the gas station, once these people can't get what they need because they failed to prepare beforehand, they will find other places to get what they need. And that means people's homes. So this is an opportunity to secure your home. And I've talked about in the past where there are two different types of home defense. You've got home defense in normal times when there is law and order, and you've got SHTF home defense. This is sort of that in-between area where you're only looking, it's only been a week, so you may not want to be digging holes in your front yard, putting the pitfalls in or putting call traps in the driveway, but it is serious consideration at this point. At this point, you just want to make sure that you've got your your perimeter defense, your home security, and all the plans that you've hopefully had in place before this ready to roll out. 
Another thing that is very crucial in this stage is staying informed, gathering information. We can stay informed through alternative communication channels like hand crank radios, CB radios, ham radios, establishing communications through your neighborhood, through your family network, getting information to help you understand exactly what's going on and how things might escalate in the future is going to be critical in this point. And getting actionable intelligence is important. The word of mouth, you know, take it for what it is, but if you can get reliable information, it's going to better help you make decisions down the line. So this stage is basically all about defenses. Your home security, your neighborhood security, you're building a mutual assistance group, which will help you with defense and staying informed about how the situation is unfolding. So moving on to two weeks or three weeks after some sort of collapse, large scale disaster, this is when crime, looting, violence, all of those things are going to be at their peak because people will be absolutely losing their minds. Pharmacies and everything has been looted at this point and people will start to form groups or gangs. Some of these will be good. Some of these will be bad. Criminals are going to band together to get what they want, and neighborhoods are going to band together to protect themselves from those people. And this is one of those things that a lot of people just, just think is just absolutely far-fetched, but it really is important to be prepared for a situation like this. We are only talking about a couple weeks after something happened. But if something does get to this point where it's lasting a few weeks or a month, things are going to escalate quickly. It's also important to note, too, that in this these, these few weeks, this month period, there are going to be a lot of people that just aren't around anymore. And unfortunately, that could include some of us as well. People on medications are going to have a hard time getting their medications. You are going to see people that are dependent on hospitals and medications start to sort of disappear, I suppose, in this time frame right here. You are also going to see quite a bit of death from crime and violence as well. You are going to have people who are starving, maybe not starving to death at this point, but hungry people are going to do whatever they need to do to get what they need. And that will lead to quite a bit of crime and violence, which in turn will lead to quite a bit of death, although... I'm not sure we're talking full-scale die-off in the, in the first few weeks. So the solution for us in this period is to make sure that we have all the plans in place beforehand. The things that we do today are, are the things that are going to be important in this situation. All the, the, the learning that we do, all the supplies that we buy, all of these things are for a situation like this. To be able to stay out of sight to hunker down and not have to deal with these people until you have to deal with these people. And as this continues on into the third week or a month, this is where the proof meets the pudding. All of your planning beforehand, how well you've set up a mutual assistance group or a community, how well you've weathered the storm, that is all going to be a huge factor on whether or not you even get to the third week. And this is also the point where you start thinking about the long term. This is, you've passed the initial first, first days. You've passed the point where getting fuel is even an option or if grocery stores are even an option. So this is the point you start looking at the long term. Uh, you start thinking about rationing food and how much you actually have stored. So this is past that first stage, but on to the next stage. Now, when it comes to a collapse that lasts three months or longer, it goes past the first few weeks. It's really hard to say what exactly this timeline is going to look like because there are so many variables that go into this from day one to day 90. The first few days, we can make a, a fairly educated guess about how things are going to unfold, about how crazy people are going to get and what they're going to do when they don't have access to food, to water, the critical infrastructure that they normally would have. But as time goes on, it becomes harder and harder to define what exactly would happen because 
if it is a grid down situation compared to not a grid down situation, if the critical infrastructure, if the water sewage plants are still running, if there is a little bit of fuel available, all of these things will play a factor in how severe this situation is. But I think for preparedness purposes, we can't afford to just cross our fingers and hope that it doesn't get as bad as we think it will. Because if something does last three months or, or longer and we are around, it would be somewhat similar to a Mad Max style situation. And I'm not talking about, you know, Thunderdome and the, and the, the crazy cars and things like that, but it will be sort of a primal society, an anarchy type society. Governments will always be there to try to regain control but until then, you are looking at a without rule of law type situation. In this three month or longer window, you are looking at the die off, which some estimates have it at 90%. So you're looking at people with medical conditions. You're looking at anyone in fragile health, depending on the time of year, whether it's winter or the middle of summer, depending on where you live, that could have an effect. You've got starvation dehydration, illness, violence will be a huge factor as well. So when people hear that 90% of the population will die off in three months or so, most people think that's outrageous. But when you think about how society would be at that point, it doesn't seem that far-fetched. And at this, this three-month or longer mark, this is the, the lone wolf, unless you are out in the middle of nowhere and you've got a great bug out location, the lone wolf will no longer exist. Groups, communities, and, and everyone that has banded together to try to just survive this situation are going to be all over the place. A, you know, the, the post-apocalyptic fiction books that you read all the time, uh, this is what that situation would look like. To get to survive to this point in a collapsed timeline, you're going to have to have the supplies and the skills necessary for situations where there is no electricity, there is no running water, there are no hospitals, there are no police or, or fire departments available, there is no internet. All of these things that we think about now will become absolutely critical in a situation like this. Ham radio and CB radios would be absolutely essential Groups that have the ability to communicate with each other and gather information are going to be far better off than the groups that don't. Something else to think about a situation where you're looking at this time frame, a matter of months, is blending into the crowd and being the gray man is also important. If you've got a year's worth of food and you've got a well and you've got plenty of water and you look like you're doing fantastic, while everyone else looks like, looks emaciated and tired and grungy, uh, you are a huge target at this point. So you don't want to look fat and happy. You want to look like everyone else. This could mean wearing clothes that are one size too big for you to make, make it look like you lost weight. This could mean not showering if you have the option to shower and looking like everyone else. That would play a huge role in in a situation where you're months down the line and you're doing pretty well for yourself. You can't look like you're doing pretty well for yourself because you become the next target. So like I said, there, there are just so many different variables going into a disaster that leads up to three months or, or last even longer than that, that it's really hard to define exactly how things are going to unfold. But that's why we do the things we do in preparedness and learn about the different things that we learn about and even talk about the different things that we talk about that would, to the average person, seem like just completely insane. Because I think at a bare minimum, people should be prepared for three months, four months, five months, anywhere in that range. And when you are thinking about that time frame, the whole point of this video is to show that that time frame, there are a lot more things going on than just being able to eat dinner, than just being able to, you know, have a few gallons of water left. Protecting those things and withstanding and going through the situation at hand is going to be a lot tougher than a lot of people realize that sort of just romanticize and say, hey, I've got a year's worth of food stored. I'm good to go. 
It's not going to be like that. A situation that does last that long to this scale that we're talking about today is going to be a difficult situation to survive regardless who you are and regardless what you have. Unless that is you are Mark Zuckerberg with a bunker in Hawaii, and then you're probably going to be okay. But for most of us, that is not the case. So thinking about these things, doing these things, and being proactive about all of these different uh, areas of preparedness is absolutely critical when you think about surviving a 30-day or longer collapse-type event. Now, over the course of doing this, I've met a lot of great people, and I know there's a lot of knowledgeable people that watch these videos. If you guys have anything to add to this, make sure and leave a comment below and let everyone else know your thoughts on what might happen in situations like these. Like I said, there are a lot of things that could happen, a lot more detail than I can put in a 15-minute video, uh, but leave a comment below and let everyone know. With that, everyone, take care and prepare. We'll talk to you all later.